Here we have a couple interesting integrals to evaluate. Part A says the integral from e squared to e cubed of dx over x natural log x natural log squared of natural log x. Now this is truly an incredible integral right here. It doesn't get much better than this. Now our goal in an integral like this is to find some u or some f of u and u prime good enough so that we essentially gobble up the whole function with our f of u and u primes um, and leaving nothing left but maybe a, maybe a constant, right? So we want to find a way to get all the x's into our u's here. So what it comes down to is picking a clever u. The first thing I'll do, and y you get better at this with experience, so keep practicing these until eventually these will really start jumping out at you. First note that natural log squared of x, we don't see that notation very often, but it's used the same way that we'd use something like sine squared x. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna like just scribble this out. And just to be very clear on what this means, that means that this whole thing here is squared down here. So this means that natural log of natural log x is all squared. So we just need to pick a clever u so that our du is also inside the integral it might be off by a constant or something here and there. Can you spot it? Maybe pause the video for a second and see if you can figure out what to choose for u. Okay, what if we let u be, how about natural log of natural log of x? Then du is 1 over natural log of x times the derivative of the inside, that's the chain rule, times one over x dx, which is exactly what we have here, right? Check this out, dx over x natural log x. So that whole thing becomes our du. So what we're looking at here is the integral, and we'll work on the limits of integration in a sec here, but what we really have here is du over u squared. And look how much simpler of an integral that is. It's just really quite amazing. Now here I just straight substituted. We have dx over x natural log x. I just substituted that all for du. You can also solve this for dx and then substitute in for dx that way and get and then use cancellation. Whatever works for you. Okay, well now we deal with our limits of integration. You can either deal with the limits of integration up front, which is what I prefer to do, or you can evaluate the integral and then convert back to x's and then evaluate the limits of integration that way. I prefer to just get it out of the way right up front so we don't ever have to convert back. So I'll do u of e squared for our lower limit of integration. Well, that's natural log of natural log of e squared. Well, natural log of e squared is 2, so this whole thing just comes to natural log of 2. Similarly, for our upper limit of integration, we have u of e cubed. Well, that's natural log of natural log of e cubed. Well, of course, this e, this cubed part comes down to the front here, and the natural log of e is 1, so we are left with natural log of e. Thus, our integral goes from natural log 2 to natural log of 3, du over u squared. Well, this is u to the negative 2. Remember, we add 1 and divide. So this becomes u to the negative 1 over negative 1, evaluated from natural log of 2 to natural log of 3. Okay, so plugging in natural log of 3, we get negative 1 over natural log of 3 minus a negative 1 over natural log of 2. Rearranging things a little bit, 1 over natural log of 2 minus 1 over natural log of 3. All right, so that came out pretty nice. Okay, let's look at part B. We have the integral of e to the x plus e to the minus x over the quantity e to the x minus e to the minus x dx. So we're essentially looking for a u and a du in the same integral. And again, these will start to pop out at you the more of these kinds of integrals that you work. But maybe you can spot it. Pause the video, see if you can see it. Okay. What if we let u be e to the x minus e to the minus x? 
Then of course, du is e to the x. So this would be minus, but then the derivative of e to the minus x is minus e to the minus x. So a minus and minus make this plus. So we have plus e to the minus x dx. Well, that's exactly what we have right here. So notice that these are the same. So I can just replace everything in this integral and we are good to go. So we now have the integral of du over u, which we know, of course, is natural log absolute value of u plus c. And then we simply back substitute for u to give us natural log of the absolute value of e to the x minus e to the minus x, all plus c. So sometimes these integrals can look pretty daunting, but with the correct u substitution, they really come out to something quite nice and quite approachable.